Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. A few days ago, we did a review on Chimera, a blockchain gaming platform. That perked my interest in blockchain and mainstream gaming, and I went on a search to see if there was any other interesting blockchain gaming projects on the horizon, and I did find one that I wanted to introduce to you guys, and that is Bounty. Now, as a gamer, have you ever dreamt of being a professional gamer? Or even if you didn't think that you were good enough to be a professional gamer, have you ever dreamt of being paid for a game that you're really good at? Bounty is the project that aims to fulfill their dreams and to help the average gamers to make a living while playing their favorite games. To find out how Bounty does that and more, keep watching this video. Currently, online gaming is raking in an annual revenue of $109 billion and it's increasing by $7.8 billion every year, so about an 8% growth annually. Asia alone makes up for 47% of the world's revenue, with Asia Pacific and China accounting for about half of Asia's revenue. The main problems that the online gaming industry is facing at the moment is number one, a lack of monetization. So at the moment, only professional gamers can make a living and the rest of gamers who spend hundreds of hours getting good at the game are unable to get any sort of monetary gains for their skills. Secondly, currently the top 3% of the gaming community receives 90% of the investment and prize money in esports. Thirdly, there is no gamer search engine, meaning no database or a LinkedIn for professional bodies to find new and talented gamers. Fourthly, there is not enough competitions held for people to participate in most games, and this ends up with most games having very short lifespans of three to six months before people move on to a new game. And lastly, because of increased automation and AI in the gaming field, there is less career opportunities for those who have a passion for gaming. Now, Bounty Project was created in Singapore in July of 2017 to try and solve these above problems. Currently, they already have two partnerships. One is with MSI, the big gaming PC and laptop brand from Taiwan, and the other is DX Racer. Bounty as a project has quite a few different ways to help gamers to earn money. The first is, of course, with tournaments. Bounty will be organizing a lot of tournaments, basically almost weekly tournaments, and there will be three different types. Firstly, there is the buy-in tournaments where pre-made teams of friends will have to pay a nominal, very little fee to participate, and this goes to a pool which will then be the prize money for that tournament. Secondly, there will also be product tournaments. So these are tournaments that are sponsored by products like Logitech, where winners will be rewarded with sponsored products. Thirdly, there will be a free-to-play tournament with no buy-in fee needed. Winners of these tournaments will be rewarded not with money but with bounty tokens and they will then enter a ladder to compete with winners from other regions, etc. There will also be a way for teams that are made up of just friends to challenge other pre-made teams out of a tournament in just a once-off match and earn bounty tokens if they win. Individual players and teams can also participate in leaderboard rankings and quests for additional rewards. There will be multiple leaderboards, example monthly leaderboards, tournament leaderboards, etc. And you just have to get into the top 10 to earn a bounty token reward. There will also be daily quests. Quests could be something simple like getting 50 kills within the day or winning a game daily, etc. And you do these quests to earn bounty tokens easily. If a gamer wanted to take a break and not actually play the game, but to watch other people's games, especially the pros play, they can also sign up to be a referee. So referee are curators of the match and will earn between 1-3% to of the pot money. Some games will have more than one referee depending on the pot size MMR of the player as well as the match type. So basically the higher level games with higher stakes will have more than one referees. Referees are like the nodes of a blockchain project who help to promote decentralization and fairness. For that reason, referees cannot choose which game they want to referee, it is a random selection. Another feature which Bounty has which is similar to blockchain projects is the reputation system. So you know how in games like Dota, you have players who rage and are really toxic in their speech, or they lose their temper and they end up trolling or intentionally feeding which is called inting. So every game has tried to put measures in place to stop such raging and trolling behavior but till now no game has actually succeeded. But Bounty with his reputation system is very likely to succeed because now 
you have a referee on board actually observing the entire game including the chat and for the first time in gaming history there is the incentive of monetary gain so if you are trolling and you have a bad reputation it will be publicly viewed to everyone and you will also be excluded from some bounties like tournament participation which is where the main bulk of money is earned as well as special promotion packages on contrary Players with good reputation level will be have access to special promotions and extra monetary gains. So I'm really looking forward to this actually. Now, if you're interested to try and be a pro player, Bounty will be opening their very own registrations for their own gaming teams this year in Dota 2 as well as Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And they plan to have more teams moving forward in the future. The last thing to say about gaming rewards is that all rewards from the games will be paid out immediately after the match ends through the means of smart contracts. So this is the only platform that offers lay gamers a chance to earn money and even be a pro. This is going to be so popular among gamers, I can see myself using this platform. Now besides the actual game, there are a few other ways that gamers can earn money. One of those ways is to be a content creator. So gamers can upload videos to the bounty platform who will reward them with bounty tokens and merchandise in, terms, in return for their time and effort. Video content doesn't have to be just gameplay like Twitch TV. They will accept any content that is educational, entertaining, inspiring, creative and positive. There will also be a referral program where you can refer your friends to Bounty and earn some tokens as well. Finally, there are a couple of other positive features of the game that are not token related. Firstly, there will be a gaming profile data pool. Think of this like the LinkedIn profile for gamers, where gamers with good scores and uh, good rankings on the leaderboards will be recorded and the teams of professional bodies can go through this data profile to look for potential talent for pro players. The other positive feature they have which I really like is called the ping zapping support. So Bounty recognizes that poor ping by a player can affect the entire gameplay for everyone. So they will be partnered with providers such as WTF Fast, Ping Zapper or Battle Ping etc to provide pinging solution. Now to use these services will cost a little bit of Bounty tokens but the cost will not be high. The cost will only be a fraction of what the player could win if they win the game. So it makes a lot of uh, sense and incentive then for people to have good ping or pay for good ping as they play. So this project isn't just monetizing the gaming, it's actually trying to improve the gaming experience by firstly incentivizing a positive environment and secondly by helping with the poor ping by providing external providers. This is the team behind the project. They currently have three co-founders. The first one is the CEO who is called Lex Na and he's also the co-founder of a boutique digital agency and a couple of other e-commerce businesses. He has quite a bit of experience in the tech industry for the past 10 years and he himself is quite an avid gamer and was previously ranked top 10 in the Warcraft 3 ladder games. Darren Lee is another co-founder and their COO. He hates Fitz Digital, which is one of Singapore's leading digital agencies, and he has also spearheaded projects for clients such as DBS Bank, Changi Airport, and Singapore Airlines. The third co-founder is Jose Heer, who is their CPO. He has founded a pet technology startup with more than 10 years experience as a senior business development strategist. And you can go through the other profiles on the website in your own time. It is a fairly big team that's very well balanced with many different roles. It's a very Singaporean based team that's generally quite young and not much blockchain experience or international ties. However, they definitely know the gaming scene and they are very successful in their own individual resumes. This is their list of advisors. It is an impressive team. There is Peter Sin who is a frequent speaker and panelist on forums and seminars on cryptocurrencies. He's also the co-head of Digital Currency Subcommittee of the Singapore Cryptocurrency and Blockchain Industry Association. And he's also the co-founder of Singapore Bitcoin Club, the country's largest crypto trading educational community. Another one of the advisors is Ferdinand Guterres, who is the director of marketing for the Southeast Asian of Twitch TV. He's also a previous general manager of Oglivy. And you can go through the rest of the resumes, but the advisors do provide some blockchain oversight and potentially some good industry connections as well. This is their roadmap. It shows two things. The roadmap shows their plans for expansion as well as their platform development. Their first MVP or minimum viable product will be due in June or July. So that's very, very soon because it's already May. And that's actually 
due before their ICO even finishes. So that's a good news. There will also be a Bounty version 1.0 of their tag. Um, and then Bounty 2.0, the improved version, is expected to com be completed by the end of the second quarter of 2019. In terms of their plan to expand the project, uh, at the moment they are quite an Asia-based plan because Asia, as we mentioned before, covers 47% of the online um, gaming revenue of the world. Uh, initially, they plan to launch in Singapore and Malaysia in this second quarter of 2018. And then in the third quarter, they plan to expand to Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam and Philippines. So basically the rest of the Southeast Asia region. And then in the fourth quarter, they are heading to China, India and Korea. So this is quite ambitious because it means that they pretty much plan to cover the entire Asia by 2018, which is the next seven months. And if they do manage to keep on track okay, with this roadmap, we can expect a lot of announcements, a lot of partnerships and a lot of momentum on this project. Finally, we come to the token sale. They have 200 million tokens on the total cap, of which 150 million, which is 75%, will be sold throughout the ICO. This is actually quite a high figure. Usually, you would see somewhere between 40 to 50% of the tokens being sold through the ICO, with the rest distributed among the team, the advisors, the community, and project reserves. In this case, they don't have any reserves, and so the remaining 25% is split 10% to the team and 15% to the advisors. The team have announced in their white paper that their share of tokens will be locked for 12 months. So that's always a good sign that the team is quite confident of success because if the project was to fail before 12 months, it basically means that the team will get nothing for their efforts. There will be three phases to the pre-ICO, which begins on the 11th of June, which is 19 days from now. Each phase will have 15%, 10%, and 5% discount each. So that's not a very big discount, okay? Um, some of the discounts that we're seeing at the moment are anywhere between 30% to 40%, some even 50%. But the small amounts does mean that it will prevent or discourage a token dump when the coin hits the exchange. Because if you have a very large discount in the pre-sale, then it's a very high likelihood once the coin first hit the exchanges, uh, the People who invested in the pre-ICO will have made some decent gains and so they will just dump the coins. But in this case, given that the maximum discount is only 15%, it seems to probably avoid uh, that kind of dump. Now, the entire three phases of the pre-ICO will end by mid-July and will be immediately followed almost by the same day with the public ICO uh, with which no time lag. So this is also a little bit unusual and the whole ICO will then finish by the end of July. The reason I say it's unusual is because there is usually a lag time between the pre-ICO and the ICO because some of the pre-ICO fundings will be used for marketing before the actual ICO. Uh, that extra marketing can be very useful. As we saw in the recent Blue Whale ICO project, um, that little bit of um, extra time, I think it was a month between their pre-ICO and ICO, their Telegram membership uh, literally went up by 20 times because of the marketing that they did. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how bounties go with their actual ICO and whether they can get enough momentum because their ICO is going straight after the pre-ICO. That being said though, Bounty has already a very big Telegram group of over 23,000 members. 23,000 members is, uh, is huge, okay? It's gigantic for a project that hasn't even started their pre-sale, okay? An average new blockchain project at this stage, all right, two weeks or more before the pre-sale, you're really looking only at about one to 2,000 members uh, expected. So 23,000 members is huge. Now, in terms of the token price, okay, um, 4,000 bounty tokens are worth one Ethereum. At the current price of Ethereum today at the time of this writing, which is $695, that works out for each token to be worth 17 cents. And if they are selling 150 million tokens, that's a total hard cap around $26 million. That's a very achievable hard cap. Okay? Now, play to life which is another mainstream gaming blockchain project, recently raised $30 million for hard cap in their ICO. Quite easily. So I think that there is a demand and attention on this kind of blockchain mainstream gaming projects. So I think Bounty will definitely be able to raise their 26 million. I also think that with a market cap of just 26 million, this uh, is currently a very attractive entry point into the project because 26 million is pitched really, really low. I think this project is going to be worth a lot more. I mean, just Engine Token, which is uh, a project that 
focuses on trading or monetizing the digital assets like skins of the game just that alone okay that project is really worth over 100 million okay if um bounty was to get to 100 million that's basically a 4x right there i think the bounty can actually go up to be a billion dollar project in the long term okay and that will be a 40x hodl i'm definitely going to keep my eye on this project in conclusion i really like this bounty project I think Bounty is not just trying to work around the current system, it's actually inventing an entire new economy for mainstream gaming that will monetize and decentralize gaming profits to distribute it to the average gamer. That's the spirit of decentralization, which is to remove the middleman and to share the profits with the regular people so that regular people have a chance to gain wealth too. So I really like the fact that Bounty is doing that for average gamers. Also, I think that Bounty will be a very popular platform or project among Asian gamers when it does come out. I mean, if you're already spending hundreds of hours playing a game, you have nothing to lose as a gamer by joining Bounty and trying to earn some crypto. In fact, you may even end up earning enough to make a living. So I think that many gamers will give it a go, myself included. So guys, that's it. That's my thoughts on Bounty. I hope you found this video interesting. Always remember that crypto investing is high risk and then investing in ICOs, especially pre-ICOs, is super high risk because you're investing in the concept, not in the finished product. So none of this is professional advice. Always do your own homework and make your own decisions. Thank you so much for joining us. Give us that like and subscribe if you like this video so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Also, do join our Telegram group to get the latest news and coin recommendations that we have. We have some great stuff happening there. Have an awesome day wherever you are, and we will catch up with you guys again very soon.